grade math, we're talking about exponential growth in the day. So we brought kindness into, into our classroom and we decided that if one person spreads three acts of kindness and all those three people spread another three acts of kindness, how it will be growing exponentially. So through that, we started a school-wide kindness campaign that will end up being in a few weeks. Um, in seventh grade, we also went a little bit further and we are talking about proportions right now. So they all created problems that dealt with um, things rooted around kindness. In sixth grade, we have a great opportunity to do some cross-curricular work um, between actually literature, writing, and social studies. One of the units that they study in social studies is based on the Middle Ages. So while they're studying the Middle Ages over in social studies across the hall, they also get to start studying the Middle Ages through pieces of literature in their reading class. So we start off with a morality play called Everyman. Um, so the morality play was actually written in the Middle Ages. It was considered a secular play at the time, but it's entirely based on kind of the frailty of humans and how we live as sinners, but then are trying to find redemption in the end and how to go across doing that. Um, so there was a, a lot of really wonderful pieces of Catholic values really embedded into this play, as it, it is entirely a play about searching for um, salvation and searching for God, despite the fact that we are sinners. Um, and then after we finish reading and analyzing that play, we get to move on and um, we start reading some stories from this book. Um, these are short stories, fictional narratives, and um, some sermons, all written in the Middle Ages. And again, we take those short stories and those sermons and we pull them apart and we look for all the common themes, much of which are about finding salvation and avoiding sin. Um, but they're also very rich texts that we can pull apart and analyze and look for their literary styles as well. And then finally, we do also read some nonfiction. Um, here at St. Robert, we are lucky enough to um, be the namesake of St. Robert of Newminster, who, as it happens, was a monk during the Middle Ages. So we read about his life and find how he was kind of um, trying to avoid the everyday sinning that was happening in the Middle Ages, and we've seen this rampantly throughout Every Man and those other narratives that we were reading, um, and how he lived a life that was different because he lived a life in searching for God. And so they get to analyze how one could have lived in that time period in searching for God versus all of the sinners and how they then sought um, redemption. And then their final assessment for this entire unit is a formal literary essay where they have to compare the different pieces of literature, fiction and nonfiction, plays, short stories, sermons, and they have to answer one of five questions that are really asking them to analyze how literature reveals how church um, either shared the message that they needed to give at that time or has shifted across time periods. Um, and has transformed into the church that we know today. So it's a lot of wonderful, um, rigorous curriculum that we get to throw at them with rich content and rich literary pieces. And we are excited to do it every year. Hi, I'm the fourth grade teacher, and I'd like to show you um, a lesson or a unit, I guess, where we do cross-curricular as well with the combination of science and literacy and religion and social justice issues. Um, it starts with the science standard, and you probably won't be able to see it all, but it's talking about how animals and plants need to survive, reproduce, grow, behave, and reproduce. And you get into the actual scientific reasonings or things, how animals do those things. But I tie it in then with, in our literature book, the story is, it's called Just a Dream by Chris Van Ellsberg, and it gets into a little boy, um, Walter, who, um, litters and then they, he goes into this dream world where it shows how he how the world will change or what will happen if we do not conserve and recycle and all those kinds of things so then I tied a little bit into our um, our whole Christian attitude about our world and each other and our behaviors and tying a little bit with the social justice issues as well uh, the fourth graders just have to begin to develop conflict resolutions and we have con conversations about how what do you do with someone who doesn't care about littering and all those kinds of things? Very basic with that. But we also talk about how we, um, our basic human rights are to preserve our environment and our world. 
And then we talk about how we do have a role in that and how can we do that. And so it ties back into getting back to plants and animals who will not be able to develop or reproduce or grow if they do not have their certain needs. And then it just kind of keeps cycling back and forth and back and forth. And the fourth graders then can see that they do have a role in preserving our environment and the world in general.